Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Tell me your name and the name of the project that you're working on. My name is Callum Reed, uh, and the project I'm working on is Moondog. What does Moondog do? We have a mobile application that is a network platform that leverages conversation between investors and startups and creates two key things we think that are interesting to the larger community. Uh, one, it creates uh, some transparency around those teams, perhaps some information and data that can be useful for the for the market in the future, but also it allows investors to engage with um, startups that might be outside of their risk appetite in a softer kind of way, and and perhaps even through an iterative cycle, uh, move those projects into a space where they are inside their risk appetite and then they can support them moving forward. Uh, you are at the beginning of the development of yes. the app and the platform, but uh, assuming you are at version 1.0, yes. product market fit, uh, a little farther than just a mere MVP. Mm -hmm. How do you see um, the different um, participants uh, using it from the point of view of the uh, startups, from the point of view of the investors and possibly others? So I think we have a way of summarizing what we're trying to do, which is to being to AngelList uh, what Tinder was to dating websites. We are focused on this. We believe in the power of usability and user experience. And done right, it can fit into people's lives in ways that uh, previous solutions might not have been able to. What we're hoping is that we can become a regular part of investors in this space, and part of their daily habits, where they're able to you know, vet and influence and uh, also get inspired by projects that are happening around the world or perhaps other people that are like-minded. We're moving this solution towards individuals in the space, whether they're investors or startups, that believe in the power of network and believe in the power of collaboration in terms of decision-making and also uh, support, um, which is particularly useful, I think, in early-stage startups. From a startup perspective, we're really hoping that this is a solution that takes away a little bit of that pain when they're, uh, the, the sort of pain of um, constantly searching for funding and allowing them to actually focus and concentrate on what they should be mainly focusing on, which is the quality of their idea and getting it to market. Uh, do you already know how you are planning to monetize uh, the platform? Yeah, we have um, several different mechanics. There's sort of more standard approach and there's also maybe uh, a more interesting uh, complex uh, potential in the future if we uh, play our cards right and, and make the solution the way that it's designed to be used. Maybe that's not the right way to put it. Um, so we have um, several different approaches to creating revenue uh, in, in our project. One of them is fairly standard. Uh, we're looking at placement fees where startups uh, based on success of being invested in uh, would, uh, would, would uh, give us a portion of, of those success fees and we've put that underneath the, the sort of general market cost um, or we've put that at 5% which is uh, a, a very fair kind of value approach. And then um, the other, uh, we, we also have obviously an element of additional services, an element of um, when we uh, create the editorial content, for example. Um, this may be uh, dependent on the quality of the startup. That may be something we take on, but it can be something that we uh, offer to our um, venture network. And there's also um, the future uh, potential uh, revenue stream which we see which is um, where we are monetizing the data that we capture from and the insights that we're capturing out of the space however we don't want to be part of that um, data farming uh, abusive data farming narrative that we see uh, amongst the large network platforms that exist today um, and so we're making that data farming if you like an incentivized mechanic in this space and in the system that would be obviously represented as a token. Um, what uh, jurisdictions have you considered uh, in, ter in your go-to-market uh, strategy mm -hmm. that uh, represent the right balance between uh, where the money is and mm. where the regulators are welcoming to uh, enable somebody like you to do what you want. Our go to market, our go to market strategy is uh, built through uh, stepping stones of minimum viable products, um, where we are focusing on what we see as um, 
uh, we're sort of applying a bit of risk mitigation in terms of our approach to market. So in the very first instance, our minimum viable product is a project product that is essentially, um, as I said, enabling the communication between these two entities and outputting some of this valuable data that we will test in the market. Um, but moving forward, absolutely, we want to do all the transactions and the investments through the platform. Um, however, that is obviously a regulatory uh, complexity. Um, we're based in Liechtenstein and Berlin, and one of our main go-to-market areas that we're going to be focusing on is in the is in the European Union. In terms of, um, as we've seen, uh, a lot of positive um, regulatory noise coming from that space, uh, and a lot of what we've been doing, because I think we would probably see ourselves as a company that is focusing on the usability and UX side of this larger trend of digital transformation in the VC space. And a lot of our approach to doing that is designed around our research and work with our legal partners about what the spirit of the law looks like in the near future. So um, as we move um, through our market roadmap, we are looking to make sure that we create a solution that protects uh, the potential uh, retail uh, investors as and when we think that we are in a regulatory compliant uh, space. Um, and they would be essentially protected by uh, the platform's uh, first mover focus around the sophisticated investors that do the first level of activity. You mentioned that a token component may be included in the future. Yes. Um, and uh, evidently, through the uh, Angelis Tinder uh, analogy, you are a mobile only That's uh, right. solution. How do you plan to architect what you do today without a token mm -hmm. and then be uh, adequately sure that you don't need to re architect and recode everything mm -hmm. once you will be more blockchain based? Blockchain for us is supporting us in a way that allows us to um, create trust in the agreements that are made on our platform. Um, all of our users are KYC'd and therefore as those agreements and conversations firm up, uh, uh, then we, those, the, the output of those conversations, the output of that due diligence if you like, is stored in the blockchain to create transparency around that project. So that's the first use we're having of blockchain. As we move forward we have deeper due diligence mechanics which require some behavior incentives and at that point we'll be airdropping the token into the community and we're currently um, we're currently researching several different methods uh, what we would like to do is actually um, what, what we would like to do with our token is connect the value of the data licenses that we'll be creating in the community uh, rather, uh, to the token value rather than uh, market volatility for a couple of reasons. One, we want to incentivize actual participation and it's the participation that will create the data value. Uh, market volatility can take the token out of your hands and make value out of it without any uh, participation in your platform. And so we think it's really important that we are transparent about that and um, you know, uh, basically uh, use a model that we think is more appropriate if you're looking to incentivize uh, authentic behavior. Um, what else would you like to address that I didn't ask you today? Oh, I think I'd like to stress just how important the human element of these technology solutions is. I think that we look in the space today and it seems to be trying to represent a lot of the activity in a way that perhaps isn't uh, authentic. Um, when you look at the blockchain uh, space, we've obviously got cryptocurrencies, we've got platforms, but tokenized assets most of the time are just startups. And I think it's important that we all do our bit to try and expose that reality. It's not that uh, I am a great believer that tokenized funding is going to be a key part of how this, how we are able to handle more and more of the in innovation energy that's happening around this world. But I think it needs to be done with a lot of, um, it, I think that it needs to be done with a lot more honesty and authenticity. I think it's not a bad thing for a startup to uh, be a startup. And I think we can uh, create spaces that leverage expertise and scale together rather than centralized VC mechanics or Wild West of crowdfunding. 
Thank you very much. I am looking forward to evaluating uh, Moondock yeah. on Moondock. Fantastic. Uh, and, uh, and thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys.